What's going on, guys? All right, so um, this is basically my uh, letter to Capcom video. I was going to basically address them, but um, I'd rather just talk about the facts. Um, so recently Capcom blamed their failure on their audience and gamers in general who have been playing their games for years and supported who they were too old. Um, which is kind of weird because younger generations don't have the respect for that company like we do. Um, that's a definite good example of that a company that could definitely be resting on their laurels. They could, they, I could, they should be making a Street Fighter or a MVC game every spring. You know, just get, put a fighting game out every spring. Put a classic Resident Evil type game out every two years, every year or two, in you know from summer or so, fall. And, and just stick to kind of regiment, stick to your monster hunter in Japan. They could have, you know, they they changed their, you know, as we know, they changed Resident Evil to some first person crap. I really, I really don't even know firsthand what Resident Evil is like right now because I haven't given it even a chance. I don't even want to see what it's like. Um, you know, obviously the only things that I've played from Capcom recently, I did play Monster Hunter. Uh, Freedom or Monster Hunter you know, Freedom Unite or something, but I did play uh, Mega Man 9 and 10. But that's just Mega Man. It's easy to make a game like that that you used to make. It's not hard. You're not creating anything new. Um, but going up and changing your IPs, taking games like Breath of Fire and labeling them on just some whipped up iOS game that you made in two months just to sell it. It, not, I mean, it's obviously a last effort to make some cash off of what you got because, you know, they're in dire straits. Um, you hear that $150 million, uh, pro, you know, budget floating around, like what they have in the bank, or less than. Um, but the point is, blaming, here's why they blame us for being old. It's, one, they don't want to admit that they failed. As this whole story with the Game Boy and Nintendo, and the guy who created the Virtual Boy, some companies in Japan and some styles of business in Japan, when you create something like that and you fail, you're ousted. You're you're not allowed to work for the company more, or you're not allowed to make things at that level. You're downsized. You're downgraded. Whatever. Um, you don't hold that position anymore, and most likely you never will. And most likely no other company will ever give you that position again. I don't know if that's how things work, you know, 20 years later, but that's how they worked when the Virtual Boy was released and some early Game Boy prototypes or some story with the Game Boy. I don't know exactly, but you can look it up. Um, these guys were fired from their jobs at Nintendo, and they're never going to get a job that good again. So to me, it sounds like that's what's going on at Capcom. Um, the, a group of people whoever decided to make these games how they were and make these decisions to change these games and to not change them back to what Resident Evil used to be, a survival horror game, and to not, you know, make, uh, turn Breath of Fire, even if it's on a handheld, turn it into an R JRPG style game again. They don't want to do that because, they're, because by doing that, it's admitting that they failed in in their idea for changing it to those games to begin with. So they're obviously going to lose their jobs and they're probably not going to get a job in any other company with that position unless they go out and start their own or a friend hires them. Now, you know, and so that's the whole reason. So to me, Capcom knows they're failing. They know they're going under. They're going to blame somebody else so they can keep their positions in the company. They can blame their lack of sales and the fact that we don't want their games. And we as gamers know exactly why they went under. And it's because we didn't buy their games. And those of us who did, didn't like them. And we didn't buy the next game out by them. So, you know, bon voyage, Capcom. It's, it's been fun. I pray that, um, you know, com concept making Mighty Number no. 9 um, with uh, Inafune, you know, I really hope that that becomes what Capcom used to be and becomes a great company and just kind of, you know, I hope that they very quickly in a few years 
shadow, overshadow uh, Capcom. That would be great to see. But as far as I'm concerned, Capcom's gone. I'm not buying any more of their games. Um, you know, they could. I want to see what they're gonna what they're gonna do next. If they're gonna just take the money and run, or if they're actually gonna try to make some other last ditch effort in the game and try to get back the fan base. I don't know, but I'm interested to find out. But let me know what you guys think about this situation. And, you know, I think I said everything I had to say. I really just wanted to cover the whole topic of, you know, why are they blaming us for their failure of a company. So, um, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you soon. Peace.